Food preservation usually involves preventing the growth of bacteria, fungi, or any other microorganisms, as well as retarding the oxidation of fats that cause rancidity. Food preservation can also include processes that inhibit visual deterioration, such as the enzymatic browning reaction in apples after they are cut, which can occur during food preparation. Many processes designed to preserve food will involve a number of food preservation methods. Preserving fruit by turning it into jam, for example, involves boiling, sugaring and sealing within an airtight jar. There are many traditional methods of preserving food that limit the energy inputs and reduce carbon footprint. Maintaining or creating nutritional value, texture and flavor is an important aspect of food preservation, although, historically, some methods drastically altered the character of the food being preserved. In many cases these changes have come to be seen as desirable qualities a Euro cheese, yogurt and pickled onions being common examples. Traditional techniques, techniques of food preservation available to the home chef, ranging from since the dawn of agriculture up until the Industrial Revolution. Drying. Drying is one of the oldest techniques used to hamper the decomposition of food products. As early as 12,000 BC Middle Eastern and Oriental cultures were drying foods using the power of the sun. Vegetables and fruit are naturally dried by the sun and wind, but in the Middle Ages, still houses were built in areas that didn't have enough sunlight to dry things. A fire would be built inside the building to provide the heat to dry the various fruits, vegetables, and herbs. Refrigeration Refrigeration preserves foods by slowing down the growth and reproduction of microorganisms and the action of enzymes that cause food to rot. The introduction of commercial and domestic refrigerators drastically improved the diets of many in the Western world by allowing foods such as fresh fruit, salads, and dairy products to be stored safely for longer periods, particularly during warm weather. Freezing Freezing is also one of the most commonly used processes commercially and domestically for preserving a very wide range of food including prepared foodstuffs that would not have required freezing in their unprepared state. For example, potato waffles are stored in the freezer, but potatoes themselves require only a cool dark place to ensure many months storage. Cold stores provide large volume, long-term storage for strategic food stocks held in case of national emergency in many countries. Salt. Salting or curing draws moisture from the meat through a process of osmosis. Meat is cured with salt or sugar, or a combination of the two. Nitrates and nitrites are also often used to cure meat and contribute the characteristic pink color, as well as inhibition of Clostridium botulinum. It was a main way of preservation in the medieval times. Sugar. The earliest cultures have used sugar as a preservative, and it was commonplace to store fruit in honey. Similar to pickled foods, sugar cane was brought to Europe through the trade routes. In northern climates without sufficient sun to dry foods, preserves are made by heating the fruit with sugar. Sugar tends to draw water from the microbes. This process leaves the microbial cells dehydrated, thus killing them. In this way, the food will remain safe from microbial spoilage. Sugar is used to preserve fruits either in an antimicrobial syrup with fruits such as apples, pears, peaches, apricots, plums or in crystallized form where the preserved material is cooked in sugar to the point of crystallization and the resultant product is then stored dry. This method is used for the skins of citrus fruit, angelica and ginger. Smoking Smoking is used to lengthen the shelf life of perishable food items. This effect is achieved by exposing the food to smoke from burning plant materials such as wood. Smoke deposts a number of pyrolysis products onto the food, including the phenols syringol, guaracol, catechol. These compounds aid in the drying and preservation of meats and other foods. Most commonly subjected to this method of food preservation are meats and fish that have undergone curing. Fruits and vegetables like paprika, cheeses, spices, and ingredients for making drinks such as malt and tea leaves are also smoked, but mainly for cooking or flavoring them. It is one of the oldest food preservation methods, which probably arose after the development of cooking with fire. Pickling Pickling is a method of preserving food in an edible antimicrobial liquid. 
pickling can be broadly categorized into two categories, chemical pickling and fermentation pickling. In chemical pickling, the food is placed in an edible liquid that inhibits or kills bacteria and other microorganisms. Typical pickling agents include brine, vinegar, alcohol, and vegetable oil, especially olive oil but also many other oils. Many chemical pickling processes also involve heating or boiling so that the food being preserved becomes saturated with the pickling agent. Common chemically pickled foods include cucumbers, peppers, corned beef, herring, and eggs, as well as mixed vegetables such as piccalilli. In fermentation pickling, the food itself produces the preservation agent, typically by a process that produces lactic acid. Fermented pickles include sauerkraut, nukazuk, kimchi, sestra paragraph ming, and curtido. Some pickled cucumbers are also fermented. Lye, sodium hydroxide makes food too alkaline for bacterial growth. Lye will saponify fats in the food, which will change its flavor and texture. Lutefisk uses lye in its preparation, as do some olive recipes. Modern recipes for century eggs also call for lye. Canning and bottling. Canning involves cooking food, sealing it in sterile cans or jars, and boiling the containers to kill or weaken any remaining bacteria as a form of sterilization. It was invented by the French confectioner Nicolas Appert. By 1806, this process was used by the French Navy to preserve meat, fruit, vegetables, and even milk. Although Appert had discovered a new way of preservation, it wasn't understood until 1864 when Louis Pasteur found the relationship between microorganisms, food spoilage, and illness. Foods have varying degrees of natural protection against spoilage and may require that the final step occur in a pressure cooker. High acid fruits like strawberries require no preservatives to can and only a short boiling cycle, whereas marginal fruits such as tomatoes require longer boiling and addition of other acidic elements. Low acid foods, such as vegetables and meats require pressure canning. Food preserved by canning or bottling is at immediate risk of spoilage once the can or bottle has been opened. Lack of quality control in the canning process may allow ingress of water or microorganisms. Most such failures are rapidly detected as decomposition within the can causes gas production and the can will swell or burst. However, there have been examples of poor manufacture and poor hygiene allowing contamination of canned food by the obligate anaerobe Clostridium botulinum, which produces an acute toxin within the food, leading to severe illness or death. This organism produces no gas or obvious taste and remains undetected by taste or smell. Its toxin is denatured by cooking, however. Cooked mushrooms, handled poorly and then canned, can support the growth of Staphylococcus aureus, which produces a toxin that is not destroyed by canning or subsequent reheating. Jellying Food may be preserved by cooking in a material that solidifies to form a gel. Such materials include gelatine, agar, maize flour, and arrowroot flour. Some foods naturally form a protein gel when cooked such as eels and elvers, and sapunculid worms, which are a delicacy in Xamen and Fujian province of the People's Republic of China. Jellied eels are a delicacy in the east end of London, where they are eaten with mashed potatoes. Potted meats in aspic, were a common way of serving meat off cuts in the UK until the 1950s. Many jugged meats are also jellied. A traditional British way of preserving meat is by setting it in a pot and sealing it with a layer of fat. Also common is potted chicken liver. Compare pass and tar copyright. Jugging. Meat can be preserved by jugging, the process of stewing the meat in a covered earthenware jug or casserole. The animal to be jugged is usually cut into pieces, placed into a tightly sealed jug with brine or gravy, and stewed. Red wine and or the animal's own blood is sometimes added to the cooking liquid. Jugging was a popular method of preserving meat up until the middle of the 20th century. Subterranean burial, burial of food can preserve it due to a variety of factors, lack of light, lack of oxygen, cool temperatures, pH level, or desiccants in the soil. Burial may be combined with other methods such as salting or fermentation. Most foods can be preserved in soil that is very dry and salty, or soil that is frozen. 
Many root vegetables are very resistant to spoilage and require no other preservation than storage in cool dark conditions, for example by burial in the ground, such as in a storage clamp. Century eggs are created by placing eggs in alkaline mud, resulting in their inorganic fermentation through raised pH instead of spoiling. The fermentation preserves them and breaks down some of the complex, less flavorful proteins and fats into simpler more flavorful ones. Cabbage was traditionally buried in the fall in northern farms in the USA for preservation. Some methods keep it crispy while other methods produce sauerkraut. A similar process is used in the traditional production of kimchi. Sometimes meat is buried under conditions that cause preservation. If buried on hot coals or ashes, the heat can kill pathogens, the dry ash can desiccate, and the earth can block oxygen and further contamination. If buried where the earth is very cold, the earth acts like a refrigerator. In Orissa, India, it is a practice to store rice and paddy by burial under the earth. This method helps to store for 3-6 months in dry season. Curing, the earliest form of curing was dehydration. Often salt to add it to accelerate this process. In the culinary world it was common to choose raw salts from various sources. More modern examples of salts that are used as preservatives include sodium chloride, sodium nitrate NaNO3 and sodium nitrite. Even at mild concentration sodium chloride is capable of neutralizing the antimicrobial character of natural compounds. Fermentation Some foods such as many cheeses, wines, and beers will keep for a long time because their production uses specific microorganisms that combat spoilage from other less benign organisms. These microorganisms keep pathogens in check by creating an environment toxic for themselves and other microorganisms by producing acid or alcohol. Starter microorganisms, salt, hops, controlled temperatures, controlled levels of oxygen and or other methods are used to create the specific controlled conditions that will support the desirable organisms that produce food fit for human consumption. Fermentation is the microbial conversion of starch and sugars into alcohol. Not only can fermentation produce alcohol, but it can also be a valuable preservation technique. Fermentation can also make foods more nutritious and palatable. For example, Drinking water in the Middle Ages was dangerous because it often contained pathogens that could spread disease. When the water is made into beer, the resulting alcohol kills any bacteria in the water that could make you sick. Additionally, the water now has the nutrients from the barley and other ingredients, and the microorganisms can also produce vitamins as they ferment. Industrial Modern Techniques Techniques of food preservation developed in research laboratories for commercial applications. Pasteurization Pasteurization is a process for preservation of liquid food. It was originally applied to combat the souring of young local wines. Today, the process is mainly applied to dairy products. In this method, milk is heated at about 70 AA degrees Celsius for 15 to 30 seconds to kill the bacteria present in it and cooling it quickly to 10 AA degrees Celsius to prevent the remaining bacteria from growing. The milk is then stored in sterilized bottles or pouches in cold places. This method was invented by Louis Pasteur in 1862. Vacuum Packing Vacuum packing stores food in a vacuum environment, usually in an airtight bag or bottle. The vacuum environment strips bacteria of oxygen needed for survival, slowing spoiling. Vacuum packing is commonly used for storing nuts to reduce loss of flavor from oxidation. Artificial food additives Preservative food additives can be antimicrobial, which inhibit the growth of bacteria or fungi, including mold, or antioxidant such as oxygen absorbers, which inhibit the oxidation of food constituents. Common antimicrobial preservatives include calcium propionate, sodium nitrate, sodium nitrite, sulfites and a sodium EDTA. Antioxidants include BHA and BHT. Other preservatives include formaldehyde, glutaraldehyde, ethanol, and methylchloroacetazole in 1. Irradiation Irradiation of food is the exposure of food to ionizing radiation. Either high-energy electrons or X-rays from accelerators gamma rays. The treatment has a range of effects, 
including killing bacteria, molds, and insect pests, reducing the ripening and spoiling of fruits, and at higher doses inducing sterility. The technology may be compared to pasteurization. It is sometimes called cold pasteurization, as the product is not heated. However, it is fundamentally different from pasteurization, as it reduces the microbial load by incremental steps, whereas in heat treatment the observation of a minimum temperature and minimum duration of exposure ensures the elimination of the microorganisms under consideration. The irradiation process is unrelated to nuclear energy, but it may use the radiation emitted from radioactive nuclides produced in nuclear reactors. Ionizing radiation is hazardous to life. For this reason, irradiation facilities have a heavily shielded irradiation room where the process takes place. Radiation safety procedures ensure that neither the workers in such facility nor the environment receives any radiation dose from the facility. Irradiated food does not become radioactive, and national and international expert bodies have declared food irradiation as wholesome. However, the wholesomeness of consuming such food is disputed by opponents and consumer organizations. National and international expert bodies have declared food irradiation as wholesome. UN organizations as WHO and FAO are endorsing to use food irradiation. International legislation on whether food may be irradiated or not varies worldwide from no regulation to full banning. Irradiation may allow lower quality or contaminated foodstuffs to be rendered marketable. It is estimated that about 500,000 tons of food items are irradiated per year worldwide in over 40 countries. These are mainly spices and condiments with an increasing segment of fresh fruit irradiated for fruit fly quarantine. Pulsed electric field electroporation Pulsed electric field electroporation is a method for processing cells by means of brief pulses of a strong electric field. PEF holds potential as a type of low-temperature alternative pasteurization process for sterilizing food products. In PEF processing, a substance is placed between two electrodes, then the pulsed electric field is applied. The electric field enlarges the pores of the cell membranes, which kills the cells and releases their contents. PEF for food processing is a developing technology still being researched. There have been limited industrial applications of PEF processing for the pasteurization of fruit juices. Modified atmosphere. Modifying atmosphere is a way to preserve food by operating on the atmosphere around it. Salad crops that are notoriously difficult to preserve are now being packaged in sealed bags with an atmosphere modified to reduce the oxygen concentration and increase the carbon dioxide concentration. There is concern that, although salad vegetables retain their appearance and texture in such conditions, this method of preservation may not retain nutrients, especially vitamins. Grains may be preserved using carbon dioxide by one of two methods. Either a block of dry ice is placed in the bottom and the can is filled with grain or the container is purged from the bottom by gaseous carbon dioxide from a cylinder or bulk supply vessel. Carbon dioxide prevents insects and, depending on concentration, mold and oxidation from damaging the grain. Grains stored in this way can remain edible for five years. Nitrogen gas at concentrations of 98% or higher is also used effectively to kill insects and grain through hypoxia. However, carbon dioxide is an advantage in this respect, as it kills organisms through hypercarbia and depending on concentration hypoxia and, requiring concentrations of above 35%, also. This makes carbon dioxide preferable for fumigation in situations where a hermetic seal cannot be maintained. Controlled atmospheric storage, CA storage is a non-chemical process. Oxygen levels in the sealed rooms are reduced, usually by the infusion of nitrogen gas, from the approximate 21% in the air we breathe the 1% or 2%. Temperatures are kept at a constant 0 to 2 AA degree Celsius. Humidity is maintained at 95% and carbon dioxide levels are also controlled. Exact conditions in the rooms are set according to the apple variety. Researchers develop specific regimens for each variety to achieve the best quality. Computers help keep conditions constant. Eastern Washington, 
where most of Washington a Euro unregistered trademark S apples are grown, has enough warehouse storage for 181 million boxes of fruit, according to a report done in 1997 by managers for the Washington State Department of Agriculture Plant Services Division. The storage capacity study shows that 67% of that space a euro enough for 121,008,000 boxes of apples a euro is CA storage. Airtight storage of grains relies on the respiration of grain, insects, and fungi that can modify the enclosed atmosphere sufficiently to control insect pests. This is a method of great antiquity, as well as having modern equivalents. The success of the method relies on have the correct mix of sealing, grain moisture, and temperature. A patented process uses fuel cells to exhaust and automatically maintain the exhaustion of oxygen in a shipping container, containing, for example, fresh fish. Non-thermal plasma. This process subjects the surface of food to a flame of ionized gas molecules such as helium or nitrogen. This causes microorganisms to die off on the surface. High pressure food preservation. High pressure food preservation or pascalization refers to the use of a food preservation technique that makes use of high pressure. Pressed inside a vessel exerting 70,000 pounds per square inch or more, food can be processed so that it retains its fresh appearance, flavor, texture, and nutrients while disabling harmful microorganisms and slowing spoilage. By 2005, the process was being used for products ranging from orange juice to guacamole to deli meats and widely sold. Biopreservation Biopreservation is the use of natural or controlled microbiota or antimicrobials as a way of preserving food and extending its shelf life. Beneficial bacteria or the fermentation products produced by these bacteria are used in biopreservation to control spoilage and render pathogens inactive in food. It is a benign ecological approach which is gaining increasing attention. Of special interest are lactic acid bacteria. Lactic acid bacteria have antagonistic properties that make them particularly useful as biopreservatives. When labs compete for nutrients, their metabolites often include active antimicrobials such as lactic and acetic acid, hydrogen peroxide, and peptide bacteriosins. Some labs produce the antimicrobial nizin which is a particularly effective preservative. These days, lab bacteriosins are used as an integral part of hurdle technology. Using them in combination with other preservative techniques can effectively control spoilage bacteria and other pathogens, and can inhibit the activities of a wide spectrum of organisms, including inherently resistant gram-negative bacteria. Hurdle technology Hurdle technology is a method of ensuring that pathogens in food products can be eliminated or controlled by combining more than one approach. These approaches can be thought of as hurdles the pathogen has to overcome if it is to remain active in the food. The right combination of hurdles can ensure all pathogens are eliminated or rendered harmless in the final product. Hurdle technology has been defined by Leisner as an intelligent combination of hurdles that secures the microbial safety and stability as well as the organoleptic and nutritional quality and the economic viability of food products. The organoleptic quality of the food refers to its sensory properties, that is its look, taste, smell, and texture. Examples of hurdles in a food system are high temperature during processing, low temperature during storage, increasing the acidity, lowering the water activity or redox potential, and the presence of preservatives or biopreservatives. According to the type of pathogens and how risky they are, the intensity of the hurdles can be adjusted individually to meet consumer preferences in an economical way, without sacrificing the safety of the product. See also Notes References External links a circa 1894 Gustav Hammer and Company Commercial Cooking Machinery Catalog. Dehydrating Food, Preserving Foods from the Clemson Extension Home and Garden Information Center, National Center for Home Food Preservation, BBC News Online, U.S. Army Food. Just Add Urine, Home Economics Archive, Tradition, Research, History, an e-book collection of over 1,000 classic books on home economics spanning 1850 to 1950, created by Cornell University's Mann Library.